Greetings, Internet, and welcome to another episode of A Comedy Musician Reacts. My name is Insane Ian, I am a comedy musician and comedy music fan, and on this show I react to comedy music from the perspective of a comedy musician. I like repetitive redundancy. Anyway, this week I'm reacting to two songs, I think one of them is a song, uh, from Tom Carty and Wolves of Glendale. First, I'm checking out uh, the recently released Improv Comedy Performance by Tom Carty, which I assume is a song, but possibly could not be. Uh, and I'm also reacting to a live performance of Olivia by Wolves of Glendale. But if this is your first time checking this out here, please like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the things that you do to feed the algorithm to get more eyeballs onto these videos. And if you really enjoy what you see, please consider supporting me on Patreon, where patrons get these videos early-ish, this video was kind of late, uh, and uh, get my music early and all sorts of other cool things like that. Uh, also, if it is your first time joining us, I do pause a lot because I don't want to talk over the lyrics and possibly miss any of the jokes, and so I pause to react. And sometimes on this show, I give analysis based on my uh, perspective as a comedy musician, and sometimes it's just me sitting and laughing. It's a crapshoot, whatever you're going to get, but I think it's a good time. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, let's dive into the first track we're checking out, Improv Comedy Performance by Tom Carty. Um, we've reacted to a bunch of Tom Carty on this show here before. This one's a short one. I tend to not react to songs or, or things that are a minute or under. This is just over a minute, so it, it fits in. It's just like, you know, I want to have enough time to react to something and have something to say. Um, this one's on the short end, but, but still, you know, it's a minute and a half, basically. So, we'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, to accompany tonight's improv comedy performance, we have on the keyboard supplying an entirely improvised musical backing track, Mr. Thomas Cardi. He's making it up as well. So, uh, it, it's it, Tom Cardi playing everybody in an improv comedy troupe. Already, I'm excited for this. Uh, number one, Tom Cardi is an improviser, if I'm if I remember correctly. I saw an interview with him, uh, he's an improviser, and then got into doing comedy music on TikTok, and uh, yeah, bravo on this very meta song that we're going to get. Obviously it's going to be a song because we've got Tom playing piano on it, uh, playing accompaniment, uh, but uh, it, it, you know, you've seen Whose Line Is It Anyway, you know how they do the, the games, and Having been in an in a improv troupe myself, uh, I, I did stand-up for a number of years, I did improv for a number of years, and uh, having been in a troupe myself, this is uh, hitting home in a, in a certain way that only, only people who've done improv versus people who've seen improv know. It's hitting both of those things very specifically. Um, there's a great sketch by a group called... Uh, Cirque to So What, which is made up of comedy musicians doing sketch comedy. Uh, the Great Luke Ski, Devo Spice, Worm Quartet, and uh, Chris Mazzalesta of Power Salad uh, doing sketch comedy, and they have a, song, uh, a sketch called Let's Do Improv, which is just the most, if you've been in an improv troupe, just a hilarious sketch. But anyway, back to this. All right. To inspire our scenes, I'm going to need a word. So from this side of the audience, can I get a single Your word? Pineapple, fuck TikTok, bedtime. Ah, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> the cacophony one gets when asking for a word to, to base an improv sketch on, and then you can never understand anything, and then you wait for all of that to be done with, and the person who's shout something after the crowd is usually the one that's selected. I heard this. It's amazing. Bedtime. So let's see a little improv based on the word bedtime. Which a is two, two words. A two. A one. Oh, what a lovely day in bed. Oh, time to wake up, I suppose. What a beautiful morning. Hmm, look at the sun. Well, oh, yes, and the sun is very big. <laughs> Not all improv works. This is this is a key component to remember if going to see a live improv show. It's not all whose line is it anyway. Whose line is it anyway is amazing, but it's also edited. They film a lot of things for an episode, 
and not all of those things make it into an episode. Sometimes, just doesn't work. Sometimes the sketches just don't hit, sometimes the jokes don't land, and it doesn't work. So not everything is going to be 100% brilliance. Sometimes you get things like this. And as an improv performer, you know, I, I would see this and go, this is a very real thing to experience. And also, as an audience member, I go, he said bedtime, which means going to bed, not waking up in the morning, but whatever. Uh, I love this smug look from this audience member that Tom is playing, too, because it's just like, yeah, you're trying. A for effort, but effort spelled with E. Good morning, Tony. We have to go to the beach. Why? Yes, and it's the day of the big sand building <laughs> castle competition that you've been training for. Cut to the beach. The beach. <laughs> <laughs> this has nothing to do with bedtime. You're just going off on a riff that you want to go off on. Happens all the time in an improv sketch, uh, especially when you're given, like, admittedly, a bad word to riff off of. Just happens sometimes. You, sometimes you just kind of have to take the lead and take it somewhere. Yeah. Sometimes that's a mark of the, the, the word that you've given, and sometimes it's a mark of the troop not being able to work with something like that. You know, being able to, to riff and create an entire scene based on a word is a skill. Improv is, is, is a, a tough thing to do and do well. Uh, and if, you know, riffing on that in certain ways, be it, hey, let's actually follow the through line of what we're supposed to follow, or are we going to legitimately take it someplace else and have that work still? Still working in the, the, the word that you're given is kind of the, 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 the high mark for, for working on an improv uh, sketch. But <laughs> the, the disdain now on the audience member as they're cutting to the beach away from the bedtime that they suggested, we felt that. If you've, if you've been there, you know. Oh, what a beautiful day at the beach. It is very hot, yes, and it is so He starts playing Under the Sea from Little Mermaid. <laughs> oh, it's so subtle. It might not even be a song. This may just be a quick TikTok sketch. That's fine. It's got music in it. Uh, it's not comedy music, but it's comedy and music. We're going to count it. It's close enough. I've already started. We're here already. Whatever. It's fine. Well, it's hot. Um, we sea. should put sunscreen on. Yes, and the sunscreen is been stolen. Oh, no. Who stole the sun? The audience member caught the under the sea reference too. <laughs> screen. Did somebody say I stole the sunscreen? Oh, give us back the sunscreen. No, Shit. only if you can beat me in a video game competition. Yeah, I can beat you. I've got my video yeah. game right here. Are okay. you ready? Three. I'm so glad we're not actually seeing the improvisers in this. We're just seeing the audience member and and the accompanist, uh, company, accompanist, the, the person playing the accompaniment. Words are hard. Uh, that's that actually kind of elevates the comedy for me because you're hearing all these improv sketch things and tropes of like guys trying to come up with situations where there's they've got no props they've got no set it's just them coming up with things from their imagination and yeah just going from bedtime to beach to a video game competition suddenly what yeah uh, the mind is a weird thing there's a rule in improv for those of you who don't know and have not done improv uh or at least there was a rule in the troupe that i was in uh that uh when doing improv comedy the first thing you think of, your first instinct, is one that you should probably throw away because it's your first instinct. And sometimes first instincts are not the best ones to base on, so you drop that one. And the second thing you think of is going to be the dick and fart joke. You know, because you, you go to the base humor after that. So you go to the dick and fart joke and you drop that one. So you drop three. You drop to the third thing. And the third thing that you think of is the thing that you're supposed to say. Uh, we, we used to have a, a, a joke in the troupe that we were in, was that we dropped 27. Um, but, uh, be that as it may, uh, usually you drop three. You drop to the third thing that you think of, because that's going to be the more well thought out, the more better conceived idea, uh, rather than the first two. Because your first instinct is just a oh, quick joke here. And sometimes it doesn't all have to be jokes. Sometimes you actually just have to try to move the scene along. 
If you move the scene along funny, all the better, but sometimes it can't just be everybody's making a joke. You have to actually physically move the scene along uh, in in trying to get through it, because otherwise you're just going to be standing up there all the time, just riffing back and forth. Move the scene along, too. That's a good skill to have in improv. It's not just can you be funny, but can you also tell a story. Um, but yeah, dropping the first idea, dropping the second idea, because the second idea is always the more puerile after that, because you've gone, well, I had the really okay idea, I thought my first instinct, and now puerile jokes, because yeah, uh, dirtiness is funny. And then you go to the drop three, where you're actually putting more thought into it. Uh, and the improv troupe I was in, after I left, they changed their name to Drop Three. Uh, so, you know, in Baltimore, check out Drop Three. They're very good. Um, but regardless, yes, this is not a song. <laughs> wow, I am yammering my face off in this one. Sorry. Two, one. He's playing the fucking Tetris theme. Sir, if you don't stop recognizing every theme as I play them, I'm going to have to ask you to be my best friend, please. <laughs> And that's where it ends. And yeah, he totally, I, like, I pointed it out the one time, but he was doing it, reg you know, when he switched into the, the, the kind of eviler music, he, he made the, the audience member made this move and, like, said what, the, what piece it was, and it was going through. That's why it was only showing the audience member and the, the, the piano player. That's really funny. Wow. Uh, not where I expected that to go. I was pointing out more of the improv stuff, because <laughs> that's my experience. But uh, I, I always like to say my, I'm a comedy musician, and admittedly that's a bit of a misnomer, because I don't play any instruments. I, I, I write music in that I write melodies, but not actual notes. I have other people write the notes, because I don't have any skill there. I just write lyrics and melodies, and I give them to a producer, and he turns that into actual music. It's important to be surrounded by other people who make you look good. Anyway, we're moving on to The Wolves of Glendale. Now, uh, these are... Uh, this act is kind of new to me. Uh, kind of. Uh, basically, Wolves of Glendale is a three-piece uh, comedy music outfit uh, um, and they are two members of which are from the band The Cooties, who uh, I've reacted to on this show before, uh, and I actually discovered them on TikTok. Uh, one of the members does a, a TikTok series called Good Band Name, Bad Band Name, and, uh, where he just reacts to band names and says whether they're good or bad or not, and doesn't care what you think about it because he doesn't give it to it. Um, and from that, he reacted to the name Ninja Sex Party, said it's a good band name, and says that he's in a comedy band called Wolves of Glendale, and I went, okay, now, uh, now my interest is piqued, I need to find out more. Uh, and, and started following them, seen a couple of their TikToks, they do a couple of, uh, uh parodies that I've seen on there, which are great, but this one was actually sent to me by a fan on Twitter, so thank you for that. Uh, this is one of their other songs performed live in New York City, so let's check it out. This is this is like a Billy Joel song, I think. I can't recognize what the original is, but this is clearly a parody. I recognize. I recognize that the song exists already, I just can't think of what the song itself is. Yeah. Sitting on the couch, getting ready to watch a movie alone. Okay, so uh, the guy who's singing is, I think, Tom. That's the one who was doing the good band name, bad band name on TikTok. Uh, on drums is, I believe, Eric, and on guitar is Ethan. And Eric and Ethan were in The Cooties. Uh, and Ethan also had uh, a, so a solo song, which was kind of a, a hip-hop track, or R&B mixed with hip-hop, uh, 
with the group, the, the artist's name was Panachi or something like that, that I reacted to on here before as well. So, like, lots of comedy musicians in lots of different bands. I'm in several different bands myself. I'm not just a solo act as Insaney, and me and TV's Kyle are in a group called Scooter Picnic. It happens all the time. And like I said, Cirque du So What is made up of comedy musicians, and now we're doing sketch comedy. So, yeah. And people guest on each other's songs. It, it's a thing. I head into the kitchen and I grab a healthy cookie <laughs> From Trader Joe's <laughs> And then the lights start flickering, flickering And I start shivering, sh sh shivering All the candles blow out, this is spooky as heck I feel the hair stand up on the back of my neck A face in the mirror appears this is turning into a horror movie, and uh, I'm Concernicus. All right. She tells me her name is Olivia. <laughs> Olivia. <laughs> She's been dead for 200 years. <laughs> she says I'm excited to live with you. To live with you. My roommate's a ghost. She haunts my house. <laughs> Okay, uh, is that a Billy Joel song? I could be completely wrong. What, what, uh, I need to, we're gonna live Googling here. Uh, who does the song Olivia? Yeah. Uh, they're saying One Direction. That's not right. No, there's a person named Olivia song. This is great to watch. Who does the song Olivia? Uh, no, not the artist Olivia, not One Direction. It might not be called Olivia, so I don't know what this is a parody of. Uh, I'll find out after the video, and I'm sure I'm going to have everybody in the comments screaming at me. I recognize it. It's very 80s. Part of me wants to say it's Billy Joel. I think it's Billy Joel, but it also might be like... Toto or Journey or something. I have no idea. My brain has melted. I'm doing this video super late and super early in the morning, but super late in the week, so <laughs> it's fine. Everything I did was totally worth it. And when I travel, she feeds all my cats. Sometimes <laughs> she wears a sheet as a joke. You're cracking me. Just, just the concept alone is brilliant. That's so, so funny. That's great. I feel like maybe I saw part of this on TikTok. Not this performance, but them performing it for TikTok. It turns out that we have a lot in common. We both like pizza without the cheese. What? I mean, I'm lactose intolerant, so I kind of understand that, but uh, that's the thing with any other food allergy. Like, people who are allergic to, like, peanuts, don't put them near them, they'll die. Uh, people are allergic to shrimp, you know, seafood, whatever. They, they can't have that. Don't cook with it. Don't put it anywhere near the thing that you're cooking. Uh, people who are lactose intolerant uh, will be like, yeah, it's gonna hurt me, but give me the five-layer shake and the the four-cheese macaroni. That's... we don't care. It's going to hurt us. We're going to be paying for it in the bathroom, but uh, we still want it because cheese uh, or dairy. Uh, for me, I do care because... I, I do, uh, but uh, I still... still do it anyway. Um, because I'm like, hey, you know, my week's already gone bad, may as well have a milkshake. <laughs> it's fine. Showed her my band's demo, and she told me she loved it. But she might be lying to me. <laughs> and one night we start cuddling, cuddling. Whoa! My lips start quivering, quivering. Feel it tingle, now my heart is a mess. Can't take my mind. I like how the lyrics continued on the screen, even though one of them 
didn't continue singing. <laughs> We've had that happen before. It's a live performance. Uh, appreciate the lyrics on the screen in a live video. That's good. Uh, might need to start doing that with some of mine. I probably should have. I have a couple live videos here on the channel of me performing songs, and sometimes it's for the very first time, and so those words don't all come out as words. I trip over my own tongue quite a bit. It happens. Performance. Yeah. Nothing's ghost, I think I'm probably possessed. We make out till the sun comes up. How does that work? How do you make out with a ghost? They're not tangible. That I don't want to learn. It's just it's I'm curious for the purpose of the song. There's a whole uh Mighty Magiswords episode of of Prius has to has to tell a ghost that he loves her in order to, uh, it's a whole thing. There's a go it, the ghost is played by Kate Micucci, who is from Garfunkel and Oates, comedy music connection. Ha! Battery life. God damn it. Hold, please. Okay, I'm back. Took a couple minutes to to do a couple things. Got some very important information that I'll let y'all know about later. Uh, but I did, however, figure out what song it was. It's Somebody's Baby by Jackson Brown. I knew it had an 80s feel. I was way off on the artist. Eh. And it's also not originally called Olivia, apparently, obviously. Somebody's Baby, Jackson Brown. Anyway, continuing. She says I kissed her better than Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison. <laughs> Call my mom, tell her I'm in love with a woman who is dead. She says, what the fuck? Hey, what the fuck? True. What? Actually, the fuck? Uh, I mean, there's that whole scene in Ghostbusters where Ray dreams about getting a BJ from a ghost, but that was put into a dream sequence later. It was originally shot as a scene where he's at Fort Determering and legit has that encounter with a ghost. And they, they instead trimmed that entire scene out and put it in as a dream sequence instead. Because, what the fuck? Anyway. My girlfriend's a ghost, my mom doesn't get it. Yeah, that, that obviously makes it better. What? It's a ghost. She makes weird sounds. Like... <laughs> she sat me down to talk about How she needs me to feed her a dog That's a deal breaker for me. As if the rest of it wasn't already, but that's clearly where a line of delineation is drawn. Olivia's ghost life is only possible if she eats a dog under the age of three. That's a puppy. No, no. Stealing a puppy is pretty easy Although I feel pretty guilty For the owners and the puppy Every week yeah. But I'm in love And love is crazy And it's not me It's the love There's love, and then there's puppy harm. Ah, uh, cool. That, that's a deal breaker for me, y'all. Sorry. <laughs> sacrifice a puppy for love. You gotta sacrifice a puppy for love. Just going all in. <laughs> sacrifice a puppy for love. You gotta sacrifice a puppy for love. Sacrifice a puppy for love. You gotta sacrifice a puppy for love. We're filming this. 
<laughs> Getting the audience to sing along with that and then telling them that you're filming it. Uh, so good. <laughs> Bravo. Good rock star ending there. <laughs> and then and then he just murders the rest of the band. Great. That that was phenomenal. That was excellent. Excellent work. Uh, really, really enjoyed that. If you want to enjoy that too without me yammering all over it, of course, links are in the description to see both of those videos without me pausing and doing all the stuff that I do. If you enjoyed the stuff that I do, please like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the things that you do to feed the algorithm to get more eyeballs onto these videos. And if you really want to support the channel, check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash insaneian, where you can get these videos early, uh, get your name in the end credits, uh, see and hear my music early, and all sorts of other cool stuff like that. Anyway, that's it for this week. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time. Okay, bye. One, Nona's got herself a big brown beaver, and she shows it off to all her friends. One day you know that beaver trying to leave her, so she can't get more cyclone fans. Along came Lou with the old baboons that recognize that smell. It smells like seven layers. That beaver eats Taco Bell. <laughs>